Hello, I'll just say a quick hello and a good evening. Um, we are expecting a few more. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait another two or three minutes before we make a start. So you've got time to grab a drink or anything that you need before we get going. Um, all right, and I'll be back in a few minutes. So if it goes quiet, don't panic. It's just because I'm just waiting for others to join. All right, thank you. So hello, just to let you know, I am here. I haven't started the session yet, so please don't worry if you can't hear much. I'm just admitting people in and then we will make a start shortly. OK, thank you. OK, I think we'll make a start, if that's all right. Can I just do a quick sound check? So can I just ask if using your reactions, you can let me know if you can hear me OK. Fabulous, thank you very much. And can you also see some slides on the screen? I'm going to check in the chat box anyway as well, just in case somebody can't hear me. Do a quick sense check before we get Amazing, that's wonderful. Thank you for confirming. I'd like to just check before we get going. Um, now, there are some more people due to attend. They may or may not. Um, so if they, you see people dropping in as the session gets going, please don't worry. I'll just manage that as we go along. Um, so um, for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Laura. If you're on the pay uh, NHS and public sector support um, Facebook group, and then um, the person behind the posts and responding to the posts is me, uh, predominantly, in fact, pretty much all of it is me, um, but also some of you might know us from some of our other work that we've done. So welcome along to the session today. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking to you about the annual allowance, um, what that is and how it interacts with the NHS pension scheme, and in particularly some things that we can expect because of the McLeod ruling. Um, I'm going to recap on what that is as well and what that might mean for you and things that you might have to do. And it then gives you just a little, um, a few takeaway things that you might need to consider and start preparing for um, in light of these things that are coming down the road. OK, um, I am um, I founded Pay Engage um, in 2018 and the reason for that was really just to help people to engage with and understand different aspects of their pension savings. And we do that in a number of different ways. So through webinars such as this, working with NHS trusts and other central government departments, 
individual one-to-one support and of course the Facebook group and other sort of free support that we can try and provide as well as much as we can. Uh, it is complicated there are lots of layers to it and we totally appreciate that which is why we do some of the things that we do to try and help you okay so i'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping um you will notice that your microphones and cameras are set to off um just so when we've got some sessions that are quite big and this one was due to be quite a bit bigger um it's it we just end up picking up a lot of background noise if microphones are on and also if everybody had their cameras on we'd be effectively trying to live stream 19 or 20 or however many videos and it, it and one it can be distracting but actually it really interferes with your wi-fi connection so you don't have a very good kind of user experience and given some of what we want to talk about it's quite technical and so it makes sense to try and make that flow the best way that we can so both of those things are off but you um, can ask questions I encourage you to ask questions using the chat box which we have been using so far already I'll just pop a chat in there for you as well so you can see that now we've got slides on the screen and I'm going to send you a copy of the slides once the session has finished so you will also have a copy to refer to. Um, the You might find, depending on your device, that you can move the slides backwards and forwards yourself. I'm going to ask if you can not do that just because um, it's important that we're looking at the right slide at the right time so the explanation matches the slide. Um, you might have a button that says sync to presenter. If you have that, it's a good idea to press it and then it should just sync up with my slides. If at any point you think your slides have stopped moving, um, then just let me know and we can see if we can sync or I'll shout out what slide we're on just so that you're aware. And as I've already said as well, if we can pop all the questions in the chat box and I'll pick up as many as I can as we go through. We are scheduled to be here for two hours. Uh, usually these sessions last around 90 minutes. It just does depend on how many questions you have and how many things that you think you uh, you might need some to help with. So I do encourage that as much as I can. If you ask a question and I don't answer it straight away, it might be just because I know that I'm coming to that particular section. Um, I'm going to show you the agenda in a second, but um, it might mean that I know that I'm coming to that. And so I'm just holding back until we get to the right place. And it just means that we can, again, we can flow a bit better as well. OK, so assuming that everybody is in the right place, um, I'll just show you the agenda and, and I'm going to start the recording now. So we're going to record the session um, for people to watch back on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to do that as well. All right, so I'm going to start that now. OK, so what are we going to look at today? So we are going to look at the annual allowance. That is the main thing that we're going to be focusing on. So we're going to talk a little bit about the concept. So what is it and how does it work? We're going to then look into a bit more detail. So under the bonnet, if you like, about how that actually does work and what that means for you or what it's designed to do. Um, we will then move on to McLeod and what kind of the concept of McLeod is. And again, we're then going to look at the mechanics of that. So what does that really mean and how does that work, um, particularly in respect of the lifetime allowance? And then we're also going to talk about timelines. So how is this all going to hang together and when are you going to be required to do things and to look at things? Um, hopefully then, as we go through the session, what we'll do is we'll build up a bit of a task list. So that will include when you can expect to get certain statements, how you or when you will need to potentially perform some recalculations of any annual allowance charges, how you tell HMRC, how you tell NHS pensions. And also, if you do feel that you need um, professional paid for support, uh, there is an option that the NHS pension scheme is providing where you can potentially claim back some or all of those costs as well. So there's quite a few things in there to think about as we work through this. And um, what I will say is thank you for coming along because we are working a little bit ahead of time at the moment, which is really good. People tend to leave this stuff until the last minute and then it's going to it causes problems. And this year in particular, it is going to cause more problems if everybody waits until the last possible second. And that will become apparent as we go through the session. So well done for coming along. Um, it's not a great way to spend a Tuesday night. I realise that. But here we are. So you, you're probably all here because you've got some awareness of what the annual allowance is. Um, and that might be because you've had annual allowance issues to measure and assess in the past, or it might be that you've read something or you think your circumstances might apply. It doesn't apply to everybody. 
there are most of the membership of the scheme will go through their entire life not knowing what the annual allowance is because they don't need to um, but for those who have particularly perhaps longer service or are higher earners then it can become more of an issue because what the annual allowance is is it's the limit on the amount of tax-free pension savings someone can have in a tax year. So any savings um, that we make that are under that allowance or that limit, there's not a problem, as the people quite often don't know about it. But if we go over that limit, then we might have some action to take, and that might be what you've seen before. So just out of interest, those of you that are here now, if you can use your reactions, um, have any of you received one of those pension saving statements before from NHS pensions that talk about pension growth or have had tax charges to pay in the past. I'm expecting you all to say yes. OK, yeah. OK, perfect. So you'll have some sort of idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so the, the annual allowance, and as we say, it's that it's that cap on the amount of growth we can have. And this is quite important um, for schemes like the NHS pension scheme, because it's quite a strange way that we have to look at this. Um, it isn't about the contributions that you've paid and your employers paid. It's not about the overall value of your pension benefits. It's about the growth in the benefits. OK, so we're just going to illustrate this on this little chart that we've got here. And we've got the tax years across the bottom axis and we've got the pension growth or the value of the pension benefits on the left hand axis. So the annual allowance, what we're doing is we're measuring the growth in a tax year. So you can see that each of the blue boxes, the navy blue boxes, is a tax year and you can see the size of that box shows the size of the growth. So what we can see is that our pension doesn't necessarily grow by the same or similar amount every year. There are different things that can happen that can trigger more growth or less growth. But what the annual allowance is, is essentially is the measure of the size of that blue box. And we're going to look at that in a bit more detail. So as I've said, if you're under the allowance, then there's no problem. Um, there's no tax to pay or any assessment to do. But if you go over the allowance, then there will be some actions to take. Now, the annual allowance has been in place now since 2006. So it has been around for quite a while. Um, and we've got a little chart here that shows you what the annual allowance level has been since its inception in 2006. So you can see it was quite high and then it went even higher. So its highest point in 2010, it was £250,000, which is quite a big, big allowance. And then there was quite a significant drop in 11-12 where it went down to 50000 And then it was kind of running at 40000 for quite a long time. And then in the 2023 budget, the Chancellor confirmed the increase in the annual allowance from 40 to 60,000 from the 23 24 tax year onwards. So, when we start looking at this, what we've got to remember is that the allowance itself hasn't been the same all the time. And so, when we're doing our assessment, we need to make sure we're assessing against the allowance that was in place in each tax year, if that makes sense. Now, the other thing that we have to bear in mind is that some people have had a lower allowance in the past if they are what is known as a higher earner. Now, a higher earner really focuses around your taxable income, and we're going to talk about that a bit later, but you might be aware of this already. So all the, oh, the allowance might have been, for example, 40,000. If your taxable income was over a certain level, then your allowance might have actually been less than the standard. And we need to make sure we understand that as well, because that is also going to impact on potentially any breaches of the allowance and tax charges that we might have to pay. And that's called tapering. So you might have seen that before. Certainly, if you've done some work with us before, you'll have seen that we talk about tapering quite a lot. Um, so really what we're saying is where the taxable income is over a certain level, the allowance will reduce or taper down accordingly. Um, and that is something that we need to be aware of as well. OK, any questions sort of just around the basics? We're going to go into the detail now, so hopefully that will pull out um, some more questions as well. So let's look at the mechanics then. So what we do when we look at the annual allowance is we have to look at something called the pensions input amount. So we love jargon in pensions, use it all the time, almost as much as medicine. 
Um, so it's important that we use it because you need to be familiar with it. You're going to see it written down on things. You're going to hear people refer to it. You need to know what that is, but we were going to explain it for you. So it's the pensions input amount, which is quite often abbreviated to the PIA because we do also love an abbreviation. Um, and all the pensions input amount is essentially is it's the growth in the pension benefits. So pensions input amount and growth are really the same thing when we're talking in this context. And the way that we measure your growth or your pensions input amounts is we look at your annual pension that you have built up at the start of the tax year. So let's say my annual pension at the 6th of April 22 was £10,000 a year. That's my pension at the start of the tax year. And what we do is we compare it to my annual pension at the end of the tax year because it should go up. So if my pension at the end of the tax year is £12,000 and it was £10,000 at the start, you can see it's gone up by £2,000. Does that make sense? We then have to multiply that increase in our pension by a HMRC factor, which is 16. OK, and when we do that, that gives us our pension input amount. So, of course, whenever we multiply anything by 16, it gets quite a lot bigger, doesn't it? And that's what those pension input amounts are that you see on the statements. Quite often they look quite large. They probably feel a bit wrong like because they don't really seem to correlate with anything. And quite often it's because of the multiplying by 16. So there is a little bit more detail that we need to consider. So apart from our headlines up here, there's a bit more in each step. So when we're looking at the annual pension at the start of the tax year, we also need to include any lump sum element. So in the 1995 section, you're probably aware that you receive a lump sum in addition to the pension. So we have to incorporate that into this calculation as well. We can also make an adjustment for inflation. So my pension at the start of the tax year might have been £10,000. But if inflation is 1%, I can add that on to increase my starting pension. So instead of it being £10,000, it's £10,100. Okay. So the higher inflation is, the more it actually helps you with this because it's giving you a higher starting figure for the calculation. So then we would subtract the pension at the start. At the end of the tax year, again, we need to include any lump sum. So lump sum and pension at the start versus lump sum and pension at the end. And we multiply it by that HMRC factor of 16. Now, it doesn't change. It's the same for everybody, regardless of how old you are or what sex you are. It's exactly the same. And what it's doing, we're multiplying it by 16, is because what we're saying is that when you receive your pension, so if you receive your £10,000 per annum of pension, you don't receive that once. You receive that every single year that you're alive. So that could be 10 years, it could be 16 years, it could be 25 years, it could be whatever it is. So that factor is there to demonstrate that your pension isn't a one off payment. It's an ongoing income and that's what it's designed to do. So when we've done all of that, that then gives us the growth in the value of your benefits. And that is what we mean by your pensions input amount. So when you look at your statement and you see um, a pensions input amount of say 40,000 that probably means that your pension has increased by about two and a half thousand pounds per annum that's what it's kind of boiling down to so that is some of the mechanics now I wouldn't get too hung up on it because you're not gonna shouldn't have to do this yourself because the pension scheme does produce these figures for you if it needs to but I think it can help to have a little bit of context as to how we get to those numbers because as I say they do feel quite large sometimes um, so all the reasons why we might have quite large numbers is um, because the NHS pension scheme, the 1995 and 2008 sections are final pay or final salary sections. So what that means is all of the service that we've got in that scheme is linked to our current pay. So if we have a significant pay increase, a consultant pay award, for example, that means that all of the pension years we've got under the 95 section, as an example, will be recalculated on the higher pay, which is great. So what that means is more pay and it means the pension has gone up as well. 
but it does mean that we might have a year where we've got more growth than we would do normally because of that change in pay. So through the changes to the increment points and things like that can be where we see a spike in the growth in that year of the increment. Does that make sense? Okay. Does anybody have any questions around that or how the pensions input amount works? Or do you want me to run through any of that again? So it's the growth in the pension benefits. And we've got to remember some of the benefits are final salary linked. And so that means that when we have a pay increase, it can significantly increase the pension, which could potentially give us um, a large pensions input amount. OK. Um, Helen, if it says zero, is this the mistake? A great question, Helen. And no, probably not, because remember, it's about growth. OK, so remember, we're taking the pension at the start of the tax year, increasing it by inflation and comparing it to the pension at the end of the tax year. So let's go with some figures as an example, like what we've been experiencing recently. Let's say your pension at the start of the tax year is £10,000. And let's adjust it for inflation. And let's use last year's inflation, which was 10.1%. So that gives us a pension of £11,000 a year, because we've got to add on an increase of 10%. If your pay hasn't gone up by 10%, so let's say your pay went up by 5%, then it's not going to have grown any more by the adjustment for the inflation because it's actually less. And that will give you a zero growth figure in circumstances like that. So where your pay increase has been lower than the inflation, that can mean that you can have a zero figure for 95 and 2008, for example, or if the pay went down or anything like that. So um, it can be zero. And I would typically expect it to be zero where perhaps inflation has been quite high. Um, we do know that typically public sector pay doesn't always keep track with inflation. So you can sometimes see a zero on that, especially now because you're in the 2015 section. So new pension is building up in 2015. So it wouldn't be uncommon to have a zero on 95, for example, but £37,000 or whatever in 2015 because you've got those two sets of benefits. Does that make sense? So it's a really good question, um, but zero could be right if your pay hasn't really changed significantly or hasn't changed by um, anything more than inflation. That could be correct. Yeah. OK, let's talk about McLeod. Um, actually, let's do that in a second. Let's talk about the tax charge first. So where we look at our pensions input amounts, so we know what that is now, don't we, from the previous slide. We know that it's the growth in the pension benefit um, and that gives us our pension input amount. And you can normally get these off the pension savings statement. So as I said before, you shouldn't have to calculate this. You should be given this. OK, so we've got our pensions input amounts. So what we need to do is we need to compare it to our annual allowance. So. Let's assume we've got a standard annual allowance for 2324 of 60,000. Okay. If my pensions input amount is 50,000 and my annual allowance is 60,000, then I am under my allowance, so I won't have any tax to declare or pay. But if my allowance is 60,000 and my input amount is 80,000, then I am 20,000 pounds over my allowance. So that might mean that I have tax declare and pay. So we need to make sure that we understand what our allowance is and also what our pensions input amount is. It's also really important to remember that most of you in the NHS pension scheme now, as I mentioned before, have two sets of benefits. So you might have 1995 and 2015, for example. You will have two pension input amounts. You will have one for each of those schemes. Your total is the two added together and you will need to do that. Similarly, if you are also physically paying in to another pension outside of the NHS, you will need to include that as well to get your total because you might have more than one pension scheme, but you've only got one allowance. So you need to make sure that you incorporate all of that together to work out if you are within your allowance 
or if you have gone over your allowance. Now, there is a rule that says if you've gone over your allowance, what you can do is look at any unused allowance in the three previous tax years to offset that growth. So if I am £20,000 over my allowance this year, that last year I didn't use all of my allowance, I can carry that forward to help me where I've gone over this year. Now, if I can do that, that could either remove any potential tax charge or it could reduce it significantly. So carry forward is something that you always need to look at and is really important. And you can do that for the three previous tax years. So if we're assessing the 22-23 tax year, we can go back and look at 21-22, 20, 2021 and 1920. And it's the, so it's the three years preceding the year that you're assessing. However, if you haven't got any carry forward or you haven't got enough, then you will have to pay tax on where you have got over your allowance plus the carry forward. And the rate of income tax that we pay is our highest rate of income tax. So if I'm a 40% taxpayer, I might pay 40% tax on that. However, the way that HMRC actually do this calculation is that they add your excess amount where you're over your allowance to your income to determine the rate of tax to pay. So if you um, add it to your income, it might push you into the next tax bracket. And so you might end up paying 40% on some of it and 45% on the rest of it. So again, you've just got to be aware of your taxable earnings because that can affect the rate of tax that you will pay as well. That kind of makes sense. So this is just a bit of a recap for all of you because you've all probably seen this before. So we need to look at the pensions input amounts. We compare it to the allowance. We see if we've got any carry forward. If we have, great. If we haven't, then that will mean we're going to pay tax on anything that we are over the allowance. OK, that makes sense. Let's have a look at McLeod then. And what does this mean for all of this? Um, have you all heard of, everybody heard of McLeod before? If you can just let me know with your reactions. Amazing. And do we all know what it means? Yeah, OK, fabulous. OK, so hopefully this is just a recap for you again. Um, it's a little bit of a dog's breakfast, I'll be honest with you, but this is what we've got. OK, so. The McLeod ruling is all about the way in which the 2015 section was introduced. So this is really important. It's not about the section itself. There's nothing wrong with the scheme or how it works or anything like that. It's about the way in which it was introduced. And it doesn't just affect the NHS. Um, all of the public sector pension schemes introduced a new section in 2015. Um, and that was part of a wider review of public sector pensions called the Hutton Report. And so everybody or all the schemes introduced a new section in 2015 and they all did the same thing. So the McLeod remedy affects all of the public sector pension schemes. It's a public sector scheme issue. It is not specifically an NHS pension scheme issue, if that makes sense. And the reason for this was all around the way they were originally introduced. So. What we had to look at was, first of all, was somebody a member of the pension scheme already as at the 1st of April 2012? And if the answer to that was yes, how long did that person then have until their normal pension age? So if somebody had more than 13 and a half years to their normal pension age, then they would have automatically moved across into the 2015 section on the 1st of April 15. So it was a mandatory move. OK. If somebody was in the scheme as at the 1st of April 2012 and they had between 10 and 13 and a half years to their normal pension age, then they would have also been moved across into the 2015 section as a mandatory move, but at a later date that would have been based on their date of birth. And that would have been at any date between 2015 and 2022. And then finally, if somebody was a member of the scheme as at the 1st of April 2012, and they had less than 10 years to their normal pension age, they originally did not move. They remained in their original section, okay? 
So that is how the schemes were originally introduced. And here lies the problem. Because age was a defining factor in whether somebody did, did not, or when they moved, that was what the McLeod legal challenge was all about. So Judge McLeod, she was a member of the Judicial Pension Scheme and she raised the first legal challenge on this because, again, as I said, the, all the public sector pension schemes did the same thing and the judicial scheme was one of them. It always amuses me that a judge took the judicial scheme to court because, I mean, if anybody's going to know, she's going to know, isn't she? So that's where we get the name the McLeod room from, from Judge McLeod who raised the original case, not from Judge McLeod who sat the case because that was a totally different judge. OK, but it was the age discrimination issue. So there was a that was kind of agreed in July 2019. There was kind of a long protracted legal process to get there. And the Court of Appeal um, agreed with the position of age discrimination in July 2019. And so that's meant that since then, really, Treasury Department and central government have been working on um, creating a remedy that removes the age discrimination. And that's what we've got with McLeod. So how does this work in a bit more detail? So, as we said, for a significant proportion of the membership, when the 2015 section was originally introduced, you would have been in 1995 or 08 section until the 31st of March 15, and then you will have joined the 2015 section from the 1st of April 15, or possibly at a later date, so somewhere in this time zone between April 15 and April 22. If you're not sure, then you can access your total reward statement on the ESR, for those of you who can, then that has not yet been updated for this McLeod ruling. So that will show you your original date that you moved into the 2015 section. So you can have a look on there if you can't, if you're not quite sure. Because of the age discrimination, we've got to find a remedy that removes that. And so that has been in progress since October last year. So as I say, it was a long process. There had to be lots of discussions and agreements and consultations have been run for members to respond to and all sorts. But we were in a position to start implementing the remedy, one that the legislation came into place October 23. OK, so it's still quite new. And what's going to happen is that for those people who were scheme members as of April 2012, if you had already been moved into the 2015 section, that is going to be rolled back as if that did not happen, and you will be treated as having continued in your original section, whether that was 1995 or 2008, up until the 31st of March 22. And then from the 1st of April 22, everybody has been moved across into the 2015 section for all new pension going forwards. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how long you've got to your normal pension age, everybody is now building up benefits in the 2015 section from the 1st of April 22. So that's phase one, and it's quite often referred to as rollback because it will be rolling you back so that you carry on in your original section. OK. Bit more, though, when you then reach retirement and you want to put your benefits into payment, you will be given, in theory, two sets of figures to choose from. So you will be able to choose whether you want to have your pension benefits between 2015 and 2022 calculated on the 1995 or 2008 basis, or whether you want to have it calculated on the 2015 basis. And the reason you get the choice is because there are some people who will get a better set of benefits from one option and there are some people who will get a better set of benefits from the other option. And the reality is you don't actually know until you see the figures. If I had a pound for every time somebody said to me, I want my seven years back in 1995 and I'll say why and they'll go because it's better and I'll say is it and they'll say yes, and I'll say why, and they'll go, because it is. And then actually we get to the point where actually they don't know. Um, and we've done a lot of modelling for people, and it can go either way. It's very specific to individual circumstances, age at retirement, what's happened with pay, what's happened with inflation, service, all that kind of stuff. What I can tell you is that they're usually pretty close. 
So even if you want to take the 2015 early at 60, it would be very similar to what the 95 benefits would be at 60, for an example. Not exactly the same, of course, but fairly similar. Um, but you don't know until you get that choice. And you don't make that choice until you retire, because there are lots of things that you don't know between now and when you retire. So you don't know what's going to happen to your pay. You don't know if you're going to become ill and need to make an in-house retirement. You don't know what inflation is going to do. So you make that decision when all the unknowns are known, if that makes sense. And the scheme will give you the, the, uh, the decision so that you can make that option at the time. So what we know then is that from 1st of October last year, those who were in the scheme April 2012 and had already moved across into the 2015 section are going to have their service reinstated or rolled back into their original section. OK, now this gives us an annual allowance issue, doesn't it? Because what do we know about the annual allowance? The annual allowance is the measure of the growth in your pension benefits. So what it was at the start of the tax year compared to what it is at the end of the tax year. If we are rolling you back, into your original section for past years, that is going to change the value of the pension benefits in those years. So it is going to change your annual allowance position in those years. And that is what we're going to have to be dealing with this year. So we've got this period here in the middle where your service is being rolled back. And that therefore means, for example, in April 16, you're, you're not now a member of the 2015 section because you didn't move into 2015 until April 22. So any pensions input amounts or growth figures that we've had in that time will need to be redone. And that is what is going to be happening this year. OK, so we just need to be aware of that. And I'm going to talk to you in a minute about what that actually is going to mean for you and what you're going to have to look at. But before I do that, does anybody have any questions on the cloud so far or any questions on anything on the annual allowance that we haven't yet covered? I'll just have a small pause just to see if anybody wants to put anything in the box. What I will also say is that we need to be patient where we can with the pension schemes because the legislation brought out through central government, gave the pension schemes um, very specific dates when certain things had to be achieved by. And the first one or the main one is about contacting everybody who's already receiving a pension since April 15, or perhaps the beneficiaries of somebody who's died or an ill health case. And the reason for that is because their pension benefits are already in payment. So as soon as this legislation came into force last October, they were instantly affected because the benefits were already being paid. Now, the schemes have until October this year to write to all of those people and say, um, hello, Laura, you were given these pension benefits when you retired, but actually you now also have this choice. What do you want to do? In the NHS pension scheme alone, there are over 300,000 cases that they need to address. So people who've died, ill health or retired, since April 15. So it is a really significant undertaking for the schemes to be trying to churn through this as much as they can. So certain aspects of the McLeod remedy are automatically given priority over other things. And that's why you might not be seeing very much about this yet. It's because it just hasn't got to you and your circumstances, but it will get there. It's just a long process and we need to try and be patient. There are one and a half million members of the NHS pension scheme. So it's this really, really significant undertaking. So if we can just sort of sit tight, that's quite important. OK, no questions. OK, so what does this mean from a timeline point of view then? So. Um, any um, any estimates, if anybody is retiring in the, within 12 months, you can request a retirement estimate from the NHS Pensions Agency um, and usually SPPA if anybody's here from Scotland, although it's quite challenging to get them from SPPA particularly at the moment. But any estimates that are produced have been produced since October last year will show that rollback position. So they will show service 
having carried on in 95 or 08 up to March 22. So that's been going on since October. So if you get an estimate, you have a look at it, you might see that it says on the first page, which is the 1995 benefits, updated to the 31st of March 22. And that is because that's the last date that you would have been in that section for. OK, so that is happening already. The intention, um, and I'm going with caution on this, is that when the total reward statements are updated, so hopefully, as I mentioned before, you can access either your total reward statement through ESR or the new My NHS Pensions portal slash app. Um, that shows you your annual statements. Now, those statements are updated each year to the 31st of March, but they're updated around August time. So if you had a look at it today, it would still probably show you the 31st of March 23. Um, if you're a GP, it possibly might show 22 because they tend to work a bit more behind. Now, if you look at that statement today, it won't show you anything to do with McLeod. And it's because that statement was produced as at March 23. And if you remember, the regulations came into force in October. So after that statement was produced. But the intention is that from this year, the statement should be revised to show you the rollback, not both choices, but the rollback. And that's what we're expecting to see. Now, I am going with caution with this because I haven't seen anything yet. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how it's going to work. And some of the dates are being pushed a bit. But that is the intention. OK, so they do a summer update in around August time. And hopefully that will show you the rollback. You can, though, request an annual benefit statement from either your uh, trust or uh, from the NHS Pensions Agency or SPPA directly. Um, and that will show you um, the benefits with the rollback as well. So you could do it that way. It's just the TRS that doesn't really seem to show it. Now, for you guys, where we've got annual allowance issues or have had potential annual allowance issues in the past, you are going to be getting an exciting document coming to you in October this year. So the legislative deadline is by the 6th of October 2024, you will receive what is called a remedial statement uh, or a remedial pension saving statement. Now, what that is going to do is recalculate all of your pensions growth for the affected years. So I'm going to show you what we think that might look like in a minute. But that is coming to you in October. And then the final intention really is that from April 25, which in reality is likely to be August 25, the total reward statement or the portal will show you your benefits, but with both of those options that we talked about before. So it's coming, but it's coming in a drip feed kind of way. So we just need to kind of be patient on that. At the back of the slides, there is some links and one of the links is to an update on the NHS Pensions Agency website and also a separate link for anybody in Scotland for SPPA, which shows you where you can find updates about the McLeod remedy and what is currently happening. OK, so you are going to be getting a remedial statement by the 6th of October, OK? It's going to show you the data that you need or the revised figures that you will need to be able to reassess your annual allowance position for the remedy period. The deadline to confirm any changes in your annual allowance tax position for those years is the 31st of January 2025. So essentially, you're going to have four months to assess nine tax years again and report your findings to HMRC and the scheme if you need to make any changes. OK, and that's why it's really good that you've come today, because there's no point in waiting till October and then finding that you need to do this because you need to be prepared that this is thundering down the line at you and you will need to make sure you've got all of your information available to be able to do this properly. OK, so the intention is you should get the statements in October and you have until the 31st of January to get that in in time for the deadline. OK. And I'm going to show you then what this is going to look like in a second by looking at our little task list here. I'm just going to jump back to the chat box. Hello, Casper. Uh, can I go back to the PIA? Of course. If my annual pension is higher at the end of the year than at the start, it will give me a minus number. 
Should it be pension at end minus pension at start? Um, so yeah, it's it's pension at end minus pension at start. But you can do it either way. You can work in minuses or you can work in positives. But basically what we're looking at, depending on which way around you want to do it, is what the pension has increased by. So you take the pension at the start of the tax year, adjust it for inflation and compare it to the pension at the end of the tax year. And then if you've got a positive number, that means that you've had growth in the pension, doesn't it? Because it means the pension's gone up. But if you compare it and pension at the end is lower than the pension at the start, perhaps because of inflation, then that means you've effectively got zero growth. So you're right. It just depends on which way around you want to do the calculation. So the way I would explain it is pension at the start adjusted for inflation compared to the pension at the end. Let's word it like that. And then you can kind of see the difference. That will give you the growth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. OK. Any questions around the timeline for McLeod and things like that? Let's look then at your task list. So let's look at these remedial statements. Now, I'll be honest with you, we've got absolutely no idea what these statements are going to look like, but we mocked up what we thought it could look like. It will be less colourful, I can tell you that much. Um, the statements are going to be sent to you in the post, or should be, as with all previous pension saving statements, you know, they come in those brown envelopes, don't they? And usually in the past, you've had um, two separate envelopes if you've been in two sections. So you have one for 2015 and one for 95 or 2008. I don't know if that's going to be any different, but you do need to typically go with care when you get your statements to check you've got the figures for both if you need them. And we think it's going to show you something like this. So it's going to show you the pensions input period to so the start of the tax year and the end of the tax year. So if you see, we start with the top row here. The 6th of April 23 is the start of the tax year and the 5th of April 24 is the end of the tax year. And it should do that for each of those tax years all the way back to 1516. OK, you can see we shortcut it a bit here, but you kind of get the idea. It should show you what the standard annual allowance is. It should show you the, what the original pensions input amount was that you would have maybe taken action on initially. It should then show you the revised pensions input amount since the rollback. And then it will either show you or you'll need to be able to determine the difference. OK, and that is what you will then need to use to be able to work out your own position starting at the oldest year, so 1516, and working it forwards again. So you're going to kind of do what we've done in previous years, but on mass at this point. So you need to start with the oldest and work forwards. And the reason for that is because, remember, we need to be looking at if we've got any carry forward, and we can only look at carry forward from the three previous tax years. So actually, we would expect the statement to go back um, and include 14, 15, 13, 14 and 12, 13 as well, just so that you've got the carry forward figures to be able to assess that for 15, 16. Oh, there we go. Anna was just reading my mind there as you go. So we, we, we do think it will go back further, Anna, as I've said, but it won't show revised figures because for those earlier years, the figures are what they are, but we think they will include them so that you can use them for the carry forward analysis. But if they were £10,000 originally, it's still going to be £10,000 because they're not going to change as a result of the rollback. Rollback only affects 15, 16 onwards. Um, so we would anticipate it would be on the statement somewhere. It might be a continuation of the table or they might put a separate table in. But that's what we're sort of expecting. Now, I need to stress this is our mock up of what we would make it look like and what we would do. You might get something from NHS pensions that looks different to this because we haven't seen what that's going to look like yet. Nobody has. Um, but it's just to try and sort of manage your expectations as to sort of the information that it's going to contain. OK, just to give you an idea. So the next thing you're going to have to do once you receive that statement is you're going to have to calculate or recalculate any potential tax charge for each of those years. So I know it's not October yet. I know we've said the statement's likely to come in October. They might come a bit before. The deadline is October. There's nothing to say they might not arrive a bit earlier. But you need to be ready for this. So you need to make sure that you've got all the relevant information yourself to enable you to leap into action when that statement comes. So you'll need things like any previous self-assessments that you've done. You'll need to know the details of those. 
you might need to keep make sure you track down your taxable income for any of those tax years and you've got it all to hand so that you can make sure that you can then um, check your tax position effectively because what you don't want to do is get to October get the statement and then be scrabbling around trying to find the information so you can work out what you need to do so you need to make sure that you've got previous pension saving statements so you can cross-reference if you do have done any self-assessments you need to make sure you can access those so you can see what tax you did or didn't pay last time and how you paid it if you did scheme pays before you'll need to make sure you've got your scheme pays documentation so you can see whether that needs to change um any details about taxable income may or may not be on your self-assessment. Um, also, if you've actually started receiving any benefits in that time, so you've perhaps taken some of your pension benefits, that's called a crystallisation event, as you can see there. You'll need to make sure that you've got records of that as well. So all of these things you can be doing now and you should be doing now because, again, as I said before, you don't want to leave it too late and to the last minute. OK, you want to be making sure you give yourself plenty of time to get through this as fast as you can. So you need to be gathering that information. Um, if you have an accountant, hopefully they will have a lot of this information already, but it's always worth checking, particularly if you've changed accountants in the seven years, um, then they might not have. The previous information so you need to make sure you have all of that as well if you use an advisor or somebody like ourselves to help you you need to be making sure that we've got everything or do you need to provide us with anything else um if you don't have help at the moment but you think you might want help for this then i urge you to get yourself on somebody's list as fast as humanly possible because we are there are a few of us that do this work and we're all anticipating a significant request and it's a small window of time four months um so it's really worth just keeping that in mind because if you wait until the last minute like if somebody comes to me and says middle of january i need your help the response will probably be i can help you but it's going to be after the deadline of the end of january because there's, there's just too many other people waiting so we've already started the list and we have about 35 people on that list already. So if you do think you need help or you want to go back to somebody that you've used before, make sure you're getting that in as early as you can. Um, because again, it, otherwise you might run out of time and you might find yourself then stuck. So it's just something to plan for. So we've mentioned carry forward already. So remember, although you might go over your allowance, um, in a tax year, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have a tax charge for that year. Um, it might mean that you can offset it with carry forward. Now, because all your previous pension input amounts are changing, um, then that also means that your carry forward amounts will be changing. So you'll need to be, that's why I've said you've got to start with the oldest year first, because you'll need to be rolling it forward as you go through to then see what your actual position is. So for example, you might have a year at the moment in the middle say 17, 18, where you had a tax charge. But this time round, you might not because you had enough carry forward to offset it and things like that. So it's really important that you need to start backwards and work forwards. That's how we've got to treat this. There is a carry forward calculator that HMRC developed Prima Cloud, um, which you can access through this little link at the bottom of this slide. So you'll be able to do that well, I send the slides out to you. Um, it doesn't really matter about McLeod for this because all it's asking you to do is to put in the pension input amounts. So if you've got the revised pension input amounts, you can just put them into the standalone calculator and it will then tell you whether you were within your allowance, um, allowing for any carry forward or whether you uh, might have gone over the allowance. So the calculator actually is still, still valid and you can still use it um, for the revised position as well if that is helpful for you. Just a reminder as well, if you're using carry forward, you can only use it once. So I might have carry forward in 2021, but if I use it for 21, 22, I can't then use it again for 22, 23, even though it's within three years, which is why, again, start at the back and work your way forwards. It's really important. So a few other things to note. Um, so as you can see, we've got all of our tax years here. Um, those of you who are more observant will notice that you didn't actually get a pension saving statement for 22-23 and that is because they would have been wrong because of McLeod. So again, when you get your revised statement over here, um, it'll be the first time that you're seeing 22-23 as well as 23-24. So they'll all be quite new to you. Um, 
But on the years that we're assessing, so 15, 16, up to 21, 22, there they all are, there are some strange rules. The first one is that the years that we've highlighted here, so 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18 and 18, 19, are what we call out of scope years. Now, what this means is that under HMRC rules, these years are too old to reassess if you owe more tax because it's not your fault. So if it was your fault and you didn't declare tax, you do still owe it. But if you declared tax for any of these years, annual allowance tax, for example, um, based on what you knew at the time, then if we subsequently recalculate your tax position and it says that you underpaid tax for 1718, with the new figures, you are not liable to pay any extra tax for any of those years. OK, if you have overpaid tax, however, for any of those years, you will be able to reclaim that back. But if you have underpaid, then you are not required to pay any shortfall because it's not your fault. The remaining years, though, so 19, 20, 20, 21, 21, 22 are in scope. So that means, for example, that if in 2021 we paid £5,000 of annual allowance tax and we've now recalculated it as a result of rollback and it's now £7,000, we are required to pay the shortfall for any of those years. OK, so that is important because you'll need to be aware of that as well. Now, for those of you who are clinicians or clinical staff in NHS England, the 1920 year was a compensation year. So that means that if you, you had an annual allowance tax charge and you paid that tax charge using the scheme pays option and you completed the compensation form, then what will happen is when your pension benefits come into payment, the scheme pays will be deducted, but you will receive a supplementary payment from NHS England to effectively nullify that. So effectively, you're not paying any tax really for that year. It was a one off year for 1920. And as I say, it was only NHS England for those that were clinical staff. That will be reopened because um, obviously it's closed now, but it will be reopened as a result of McLeod. So if you do determine that you have tax to pay for 1920 or it's gone up, then the compensation year could potentially still apply to you as well. So you do need to be aware of that. Oh, and Wales. Yes, yeah, sorry, Anna. England and Wales. Yes, I should have said that, Laura. So just to recap, then you'll get that statement, whether it'll look as fancy as ours or not, it remains to be seen. You'll need to work out your overall position for each year, one year at a time, starting with the oldest, rolling ourselves forwards. And then we will need to recalculate any potential tax due to determine if you are owed a rebate from HMRC or by adjusting scheme pays or whether you actually owe them any money or you need to adjust scheme pays upwards. OK, so that's what you're going to have to do in this kind of four month window that we're expecting you to have. OK, now for those of you who were tapered in the period, so that meant that you had a reduced standard allowance, so your allowance wasn't perhaps 40,000, maybe it was 20,000, your annual allowance is also going to change for those years because there are two parts that we have to look at when we work out if you've got a tapered allowance. The first is your taxable income. Well, that should be what it was, that shouldn't change. But the second thing then is also the pension input amount. And as we've already established, that is changing with the rollback. So where you've perhaps been tapered in the past, your annual allowance from 16, 17 onwards will need to be recalculated as well if that applies to you. OK, so there potentially is quite a few things that you'll have to work through to tick off your list to be able to make sure you can reassess your position, which is why help might be helpful. Um, particularly if you've got an accountant, a medical accountant, they should be able to help you with this. Um, I do know some of the accountants have shut their doors to new business this year because they are expecting this to be quite chaotic. Um, so again, something to be aware of. Now, 
HMRC need to know about any changes to annual allowance tax in any of these years. They do not want you to have to resubmit self-assessments for each of those years because who's going to want to do that? They do or they will have an online calculator um, that you can use that's standalone. And I would have liked to have shown you that calculator. Um, but when I went on to it today, um, I got a message come up that says um, we're currently fixing some issues and therefore you can't use it. So I'm really sorry, I can't show it to you. I have put the link um, to that calculator in the back of the slides. So hopefully you can access it once it does become live again. Um, but essentially there'll be an online form. Um, it's quite extensive that you will need to fill in to report this to HMRC. And what you do is you go onto it through the link and you fill in the information. And at the end, there's a submit button and you submit it through your .gov gateway. So the problem with that at the moment is that there isn't a facility to allow an agent to do it on your behalf like your accountant. We've all fed back that we thought that was terrible and that people need to have an agent option. And that might be what they're doing at the moment. Who knows? Um, but yeah, just to be aware that there will be a form that you will need to fill in online or somebody will need to fill in online for you to get the right information across the HMRC. And again, that's all got to be done by that deadline of the 31st of January. Any questions on that? Are we all kind of all right with that? OK, so depending on how you paid originally might depend on what you do about any amendments to tax. Um, you might also now determine that you had a you have a tax charge that you didn't have before. Or you didn't know that you had before and you'll need to determine how you pay for that. So there are a couple of options. There is scheme pays or there is uh, pay direct. So pay direct is pretty much what it sounds like is that you would basically fill in the form that's a, and it will recalculate and say, oh, Laura, you owe us an extra £1,500. Uh, we would then just, I would just then make the payment and that's how that would be. Or it might recalculate and say, oh, Laura, uh, we owe you £1,500, so we will send you a refund with interest. Don't know how long that will take, by the way, but that's the plan, OK? Now, if I've used Scheme Pays before to pay my tax charge, I haven't actually paid out any tax because what Scheme Pays is, is it's an adjustment to the pension when it comes into payment and I'm not yet receiving the pension. So what I can choose to do is just amend any existing scheme pays up, down or remove as appropriate. There will be a process for that, but we do not yet know what that is. But there'll be some forms and things that you'll need to fill in there. Equally, if you've determined that you have a tax charge for the first time in a tax year, you will have the option to use scheme pays as before. OK, um, normally you wouldn't for a tax years that are quite old, but again, it's not your fault. And so that option does exist for you. OK, um, so again, that's another step that you're going to have to go through. So we're going to have to. Make sure that we um, do the calculate, look at the statements, know what our taxable income is, do our analysis going backwards, working forward with our carried forward, recalculating any tax working out how we're going to pay that tax, make sure we, that we tell HMRC through their special form. OK, when we look at whether we should use scheme pays or not, scheme pays I quite often find is like Marmite. People either tell me it's terrible or it's the best thing ever. It, and it really, it's got pros and cons the same as anything else. So it's really about circumstances. And I always say to people, do what works for your circumstances, not what works for someone else's. So things you might want to think about with Scheme Pays is how long do you think you're going to live for? So the way that Scheme Pays works is that um, they make a small reduction to your pension when it comes into payment to start clawing back the tax. So let's say, for example, if my tax was £2,000, they might reduce my annual pension by £100 a year. That's kind of how it works. Um, so the thing about that, though, is it comes out for my pension every year that I receive my pension for. So if I defy the law of averages and live for 40 years, I'll have paid back more than what the original amount was. Okay, it doesn't stop. However, 
The converse is also true. So if I drop dead five years into receiving my pension, I won't have paid all of that back and neither does anybody else. So scheme pays doesn't reduce or affect the dependent benefits, just yours. Um, nobody is asked to pick up the debt, if you like, in the event of your death. So how long you think you're going to live for is part of it. Um, also, the deduction from the pension, so in our example, £100 a year, comes off my pension before pensions income tax is calculated. So if I'm a 40% taxpayer on my pension, that £100 is actually £60 net. And when you take that into account, it can be upwards of 30 years, actually, before you've ultimately paid the amount back. So, again, that sort of links into the longevity. Also, of course, individual priorities now. Perhaps I've got a £2,000 tax charge. I just don't want to give it to HMRC. I'd rather go on holiday um, or I need it for something else. So, therefore, that might be the thing that drives the decision anyway, is that I'm going to use scheme pays. So you just have to decide what you want to do. You don't have to do the same thing for every year that you've had a tax charge. So you could do scheme pays for one year, pay direct another year and so on. You make an election each year that you need to. You can also do a bit of both in the same year. People tend to go all or nothing. So it's either all scheme pays or it's all pay directs. But what you could do, for example, is say I'm going to pay a thousand pounds directly and do the other thousand pound on scheme pays. So you decide what it is that you want to do so that you can put that in place. And it will really just come down to your circumstances at the time, okay? Now, as we mentioned, we need to tell HMRC. So 2324, the deadline for the self-assessment is the 31st of January 25 anyway. So any tax that's due for the 23-24 year, you would do through the self-assessment as normal. OK, that's sort of slightly separate. But for any of the previous years, you will need to use that standalone form that I mentioned earlier that currently is not working. It doesn't matter that it's not working at the moment because we can't tell them anything because we don't have the figures. Uh, so hopefully it'll be back by October. But you've got a standalone form for the historical stuff but the more recent self-assessment you will have to do as normal. And again, just a reminder that HMRC have said the deadline for this is the 31st of January. So if you miss that deadline, kind of all right, you can still do it, you'll still be expected to do it. But HMRC may add on late payment fees and late filing notices and also interest. So it's within your interest really to get it done as soon as you possibly can, okay? HMRC have also said fairly openly that they perhaps have not been keeping track of annual allowance uh, issues as well as they could have been, probably because we knew the McLeod remedy was coming and it was going to change everything. Um, but they will be very much keeping tabs on this once McLeod is in place. So again, we need to be aware of that because we need to be very um, on the ball with our own position and making sure that we tell them about any future tax as it becomes due. So it's really important to be aware that telling HMRC and making sure that this assessment is done for your set of circumstances is 100% your responsibility, okay? Your scheme, so the NHS pension scheme and your employer are not going to do this for you. Um, you need to make sure that self-assessment is done and you need to make sure that you do the previous years as we've talked about. So you must make sure that this is done. Now, it might be that you've got an accountant who's going to do it for you or you get professional support. That is fine. But the, the, the driver is you and HMRC will hold you responsible if you do not do this. Sometimes I hear comments such as um, I don't have a tax charge because HMRC haven't told me. Well, they won't tell you. You have to tell them by doing your own calculations and putting it through the self-assessment or the form, whichever it is. So don't be waiting for them to tell you. You need to be making sure that you do this yourself because it's really important. You will also need to tell NHS pensions, as we mentioned earlier, um, particularly where you have used scheme pays and it needs to change or you now want to cancel a scheme pays because it doesn't apply anymore or you perhaps want to start using scheme pays. 
Now, if you intend to start using Scheme Pays, there is a Scheme Pays election form that you will need to fill in that is available on the website. I suspect it will be updated, ready for October this year. And um, we're also expecting there to be an amendment form for anybody who wishes to amend a previous Scheme Pays due to the changes. But again, you're kind of working to a similar deadline. In theory, um, the scheme pays deadline um, for some of the years is actually J July 25, which is fine, but your self-assessment deadline is still January. So let's aim for January so that everything is done on time. Um, some scheme pays is also, though, a deadline of January. So if you're filling this in at one minute's midnight on the 30th of January, that might be all well and good from a HMRC notification point of view. But if you then want the scheme to pay any tax for you on time, they're not going to be able to do that because they clearly are not going to be able to pay it for, for the 31st. So, again, you need to be making sure that you kind of factor those things in as well to give the scheme sufficient notice to make any payments that they need to to HMRC. OK, so I know it feels quite daunting, I would imagine, and quite frightening, and it's not really designed to do that. What, it, what we're trying to do here is say, look, these are things that are coming. This is why and this is what you need to do to be prepared. And if you go into it being prepared, it should make it a lot easier than this statement landing on the doormat and it being filed under alpha later and then there's a mad rush on at the end um it's not worth it. it it's much better to be prepared and have your information ready or your professional support ready so that you can get through this as quick as quick and as easy as you can okay um so that's really important as well um, i suspect if you're a member of things something like the bma they will have additional support as well but again i'm not quite sure what that is at the moment um, so I've just got as well, so I'm almost finished because we've been quite light on questions, which is uh, which is OK. But obviously do put questions in about anything we have or have not talked about so we can pick them up for you at the end. Just to make sure you get what you need. Um, links for you at the back. So I've got kind of like the England and Wales ones at the top and then there's a Scottish separate one at the bottom. OK, for SPPA people. Um, but there is information about McLeod. There is information about annual allowance. There is information about the cost claimback scheme for England. There is that link to the HMRC form, which, as we said, it doesn't work at the moment. You can also find some more information on our website. We've got a blog dedicated to McLeod. So there's lots of updates that go on there. Um, and there's a link to our contact form if you want to have a chat about anything. And then, as I say, there's an SPPA link for McLeod as well. Now, is there, is there anybody here from Scotland, just out of interest? Um, okay, uh, just for information, uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland are working on different timescales um, to England and Wales. So um, some of your statements might come out at different times. Um, they also don't have the cost claim back scheme and things like that in place yet. So because they are actually all separate pension schemes. So Northern Ireland is a pension scheme. SPPA is a pension scheme and then NHS pensions, England, Wales is a pension scheme. So they're all working under slightly different timescales. So um, again, using the resources on the websites that we've got there is really helpful because it will give you a bit more of an insight into where they are in the process. OK, but there that is the information there. Uh, questions. Hello, Casper. Did you say that you can reclaim any costs for professional help? I did. So there is a there's link here to and again this is England and Wales at the moment for cost claim back okay so if you click on that it will tell you what it is now what the regulations state is that there's various different types of compensation the McLeod ruling will offer but the main one that we're talking about here is um, direct financial loss so where perhaps you might have to pay somebody to do this for you which of course you wouldn't have had to do had it been right in the first place so that would be a direct financial loss um, so there are a series of rules on the cost claim back scheme. Some um, fees that you can claim back are capped. So that means that in certain circumstances, you can only claim up to a certain amount. So it doesn't matter how much the fee is. The annual allowance revision is one of those. So you can claim back a fee of up to a thousand pounds. So if your total fee with your advisor was eleven hundred pounds, you can at the moment only claim the thousand pounds back. But we'll wait to see how that pans out because we feel that it, 
fees potentially might be a little bit light on the cap. Some other stuff. So there's something called contingent decisions. So that might be, for example, where you've opted out of the scheme to control annual allowance in the past. Under McLeod, you might have the option to go put yourself back in. Um, but you need some help to determine whether it's worth doing or not because you've got to repay the contributions and so on. Um, that doesn't have a cap. So if I said, I'm not going to, but if I said that was £3,000, then, then in theory there's no cap on that and you can claim all of that back. So there are a couple of areas that do have a cap on the fee, which an annual allowance is one of them, which is why I said, Casper, you might be able to claim back some or all. It just depends on how much the fee is and what the support is that you've had. But use the link because it shows you the rules. It also shows you the form. Um, we also have a guide about cost claim back if anybody would like to see that as well. Um, what you will need is to be able to put on the form what help you had briefly and a copy of the receipt from the person or organisation that you received that help from. Um, so um, that's that's a, a thing to do as well. So Anna, Hello Anna, I've submitted evidence that NHS pensions as two roles in the remedy period don't have a MHO recorded. How do I do the annual allowance calculations if NHS pensions haven't finalised a decision about the two posts that are in 2015 and 2020? Um, I'm assuming Anna, because when you're talking about, and when we're talking about MHO, there's two things, isn't there? There's the ability to take the pension at 55 and reduced, and then there's what we call the double accrual, so the 1995 benefits once we get past a certain point, one year actually is calculated as two years, which does then affect the pension growth, you're right, because it means the pension is growing twice as fast. Um, so you, we will need to have the decision on that to affect your annual allowance position. So you're going to have to base it on what you receive in 2024 and then do your submission to HMRC. Now, if then later they then come and say, oh, actually, no, you can have it, and here's some double accrual, which is increases your input amounts. You'll have to do an amendment, but you can obviously notify HMRC that it was as a result of a change to the scheme calculation. And usually that sort of thing would be fine because, again, it wasn't your fault. Um, but I wouldn't say hold back doing your, your steps in, in case you get your answer because you might not. And then you're going to leave yourself a bit, a bit short of time. So you have to go with what you've got. I would hope they'll sort it out for you by then, but just in case they haven't. Not a problem. Uh, Cass, cost claim back scheme, just England or England and Wales? Sorry, yes, England and Wales. So when we're talking about the structure of the pension schemes, SPPA is Scotland, HSC is Northern Ireland, and the NHS Pensions Agency is England and Wales. The two just come hand in hand. They've got the same rules, the same forms, the same processes. So if I make a slip of the tongue and say England, what I'm really saying is England and Wales. OK, just to be really clear on that, sorry. Um, I've also got our contact details there. Can I just suggest you take a photograph of this screen? Uh, just because uh, what I will do is send you the slides uh, when the session is finished. Um, but sometimes they go astray. So if you don't receive them, you've then got my email address so you can get in touch and um, I can make sure that you do get a copy of them. I've also put my colleague Jilly, her details there as well. Jilly is our other NHS pensions expert. So you can get hold of one of us usually. And I would recommend that you email rather than ring because we are usually in a webinar, coming off a webinar, going into a meeting, coming off a meeting. So email, we will always come back to you and we can arrange a call then if we need to. But if you just try ringing us, it might be quite difficult and a bit frustrating for you. It's probably like ringing HMRC. So, um, but yeah, do drop us a note and we will try and sort something out for you as well. Um, and that kind of brings us to the end, really, of what we were going to talk about. So we've kind of gone through all of these different things here. So quick recap on the annual allowance, what it is and how it works. A bit about McLeod, what it is and how it works. The timeline that we're expecting to see from the pension scheme and then the kind of tasks that we're going to need to make sure that we undertake. So if you can give yourself a bit of time now to start gathering information, then that is really helpful. Um, just to give you an idea, um, though some of you are on the session I know have um, used our support service before, so it might be a bit easier for you because we'll probably have a lot of your information already, although possibly not all of it. But if you haven't, we have quite an extensive list that we would give you to tell you the things that we need. Um, and other people who provide this sort of support will be the same because we can't do it without this list of information. 
So again, if you're thinking you want some external support, it's helpful to flag it early, not just to get you yourself on the list, but also so that you can start gathering the information that they will need from you. Because if you're very late in providing that information, despite being on the list, it might hamper the ability to be able to support you within the relevant time frame. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind there as well, if you can. OK, uh, it's also quite hard to get information out of NHS pensions at the moment. If you do need to contact them, it can be taking quite a long time to get their details. Um, they've taken on a lot of new staff, as you would expect, and obviously a lot of them are still going through training and things. So um, the earlier you can do things, really, the better is all that I'm saying. Uh, hello Jackie, uh, thank you once again. You are more than welcome. This has been very helpful. I didn't know about having to deal with all my tax returns myself. I'll be getting more advice as to submit papers. OK, so yeah, you will need to do your own tax returns, but only if you've got a pensions tax charge or tax charge uh, and any other sort of income tax to pay. So if you haven't got a tax charge, there's nothing to report. Um, but it, you might have, in which case you do need to make sure that you tell HMRC through the relevant process. So it's worth checking that as well. But if, again, if you're not sure, we can probably have a quick chat and tell you quite quickly if that is something you do or do not need to be doing. OK. Does anybody have any other questions about the annual allowance, about McLeod, about just anything to do with the NHS pension scheme at all that you would just like boxing off while we're here? No? OK, perfect. See, that was very calm. If any of you have ever been to any of the other webinars and we do pre-retirement and we've got 300 people on it, it's carnage, absolute carnage. This one, I feel, has been very calm and very enjoyable. Um, well, um, Helen, hello, Helen. Uh, I was wondering if somebody's going to ask me this. We choose at retirement, so does that mean things can change later? So I believe, ladies and gentlemen, what Helen is asking is, we know that the annual allowance position is going to change because of the rollback, which is going to put you back into 95 or 2008 until March 22. But then later, when you take your benefits, you can say, actually, I want 2015 to 2022 in the 2015 section, which would then recalculate the pension benefits. So is that then going to change the annual allowance position again? Um, and it's a great question, Helen, because it's a very good point. Um, and the short answer is no. Um, yes, in theory, it would do. But HMRC have been very clear and said we're going to do this revisit once and we're not going to revisit again, because the reality is you would only choose the other option if it was going to provide you with higher benefits. And if it provides you with higher benefits, it would give you a bigger tax charge. So what they've said is, no, we're not revisiting it. We're going to do it this time because the default position is that rollback period. But if you choose the other option at retirement, it will not change your annual allowance position. It will stay the same. Honestly, Helen, sort of think when they were looking at this, it felt too difficult. And plus, we'd then potentially be having to go back and recalculate annual allowance positions from 30 years ago. And it's just not something anybody wants to do. So we're going to do it this time. We're going to do it once for the default position, but it will not be revisited if you then choose the other option at retirement. OK. Sharon, am I correct in thinking Ginny will be looking at any possible AA charges for me when calculating the cost of rejoining the NHS as part of the contingent decision? You are correct, Sharon. Actually, let me just have a quick check because you are on our list. Um, yes, yeah, we absolutely will do that. Um, we'll include the um, annual allowance assessment and that will be in the report as well. So it should be with you very shortly, actually, Sharon. Um, but yeah, it'll include all of those and flag anything that needs doing or might need to do. Anything in the report is estimates, obviously. Sometimes you find that um, the NHS pensions figures are slightly different. That's kind of typical, um, but it will give you an idea to, of what to expect, absolutely. Um, Helen, that's what I was trying to ask. I thought it might have been. It's a great question and it comes up and it always comes up. So I was waiting to see if somebody asks it, but is that, you're absolutely right. Wonderful. OK, everybody OK? 
Super. And then just final one final thing for me then, if nobody's got anything else. If you are speaking to the NHS Pensions Agency, um, go with caution. As I say, they have taken on, I think it's about 200 new staff to cope with contribution rate changes and the cloud and partial retirement and stuff. And obviously all of those people need training up. Um, so if you're not convinced by something you've been told, do double check it. But also, um, if we can just be kind and patient as well, because obviously if you're new and you're put on the phones for the first time, it's not, you know, it's a big learning curve for people. And it does take a long time to become a really good administrator. Um, so I know it can be a bit frustrating at times. I know we all want to know everything now and that isn't always possible, but they are doing their very best in some quite difficult circumstances, which was not of their own making um, in respect of the cloud. And all of the other pension schemes are also going through similar things. The difficulty for NHS pensions, as I mentioned before, is the scale because they're in one and a half million members. It's the biggest employer in Europe, so it's very, very significant. And, but we are here. And the Facebook page will keep going and we've got webinars running all of the time. Um, so and we've also got something new coming in September ish, we think, um, which is um, a different sort of support service. It's sort of a bridge between what we can do on Facebook and individual paid for support. So it's kind of something in the middle. Um, so keep an eye out for that as well. And if you're not a member of the Facebook group already, but you do have Facebook, then see if you can search for us. It is called NHS and Public Sector Pension Support. Um, there's about 19 and a half thousand members at the moment. So we get lots of questions coming in all of the time as well. And there's loads of free resources and videos and stuff on there that might be helpful. And we also have a YouTube channel which hosts uh, previous webinars if you want to go back and watch anything pre-recorded as well. OK. But I think that's quite enough of that for this evening. I need to go put the bins out because it's Tuesday night. Um, so I will let you all go and I will say thank you very much. Um, I hope it's been um, a little bit helpful, at least in terms of flagging some things that are coming to you and what you will need to do. Um, but you can reach out if you need anything else at all and I will ping the slides around to you now. OK, but thank you, everyone. Have a really lovely evening. Thank you.